During a weekend drive through the fields of Homestead, Florida, it would be very difficult to spot the workers who tend to these fields. On a visit to Mission Santa Ana, located in Naranja Homestead, we discovered a hidden yet vibrant community of migrant farm workers. It was Sunday and just before Mass, a wedding was taking place. After church, we sat down with Padre Pedro Garcia, who runs the mission and gave us a unique insight to the community and its needs. El problema principal es muchos de ellos que son legales y con todo lo que eso comporta, ¿no? El para el trabajo, el desarrollo. Así. Entonces ellos viven, eh, la mayor parte de ellos, en tres campos aquí en los alrededores: el campo de South Bay, el campo de Redland y el campo de Everglades. Para vivir en esos campos, bueno, eh, tienen que trabajar en, el, en la agricultura. In the 1960s, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, through its Rural Development Program, founded the building of housing facilities for migrant farm workers. In Homestead, the Housing Authority is in charge of administering and running two of these camps. On a visit to the South Bay Labor Camp, where 300 families live, it was very difficult to find a farm worker or their families in the streets. Fortunately, we were able to catch up with one of the very few U.S. citizens living in the camps, sitting outside his home. Buenos días. Mi nombre es Juan Francisco Carrillo. Yo siempre me he dedicado a trabajar la agricultura. Yo soy trabajador del campo. Ahorita mismo estoy atendiendo 50 acres de aguacate yo solo. Pues es en lo que he trabajado siempre en la agricultura. Hay familias aquí que si viven en una unidad de una recámara, por ejemplo, pagan 300 de renta. Trabajan el esposo y la esposa. Entre los dos sacarán si al caso 450 por semana. Y para comprar los alimentos para 4 o 5 no se completa. Las personas que vivimos aquí nos dedicamos a trabajar en la agricultura o en los viveros. Y ahorita como no hay mucha demanda en las tiendas, en las plantas, no hay venta en las nocerías. Entonces... Recortan a la gente tres días por semana, cuatro días por semana. De eso no nos da o no les da a esas familias para, para cubrir todos sus gastos. Mr. Carrillo was kind enough to take us around the camp and introduce us to some of these invisible workers. Each of them told us their story of hardship and survival. Una señora ama de casa con dos niños. Trabajo en una nacería. Por ahora a veces hago 40 horas, a veces no hay trabajo como ahora que se ha acabado el trabajo. Es lo más necesario, lo tenemos lo más mínimo. No tenemos cable, no tenemos eso porque no podemos pagar más biles. Lo más mínimo. Económicamente lo que uno puede tener, no vivamos que todo bien, pero tratamos. Porque los sueldos no son muy, muy buenos. Most of the farm workers that we met do not migrate anymore. However, they prefer the term migrant worker than the alternative, an illegal alien. Some of their children have been born in this country and as citizens have rights and benefits that their parents and older siblings lack. We always say that we don't have enough. We have a lot of family and we just give them what they need. On my part, I give thanks to God because I know that this is not my country and it has given us much more than because of their illegal status, most residents of the housing camps that we spoke to didn't openly express their complaints. They chose to remain invisible. Bernardo was one of the few who openly criticized the housing authority for the poor conditions of the camp and the prompt eviction of families that have trouble meeting rent. Alyssa Kandari, a University of Miami student and member of the Student Farmer Alliances program, shares her views on this issue. Being a migrant worker can be uh, a job that you have dignity and respect at and that you do get paid well and that you know you shouldn't have to live in poverty because you're providing tomatoes or watermelons or corn you know for for America's families you know that shouldn't be right if you're providing food on my table I want to make sure I'm not eating your sweat as part of my as part of my meal and so that's what we're trying to do and um, you know by helping the farm workers help themselves and so they have you know they can make money and they can move on to other things 
Peggy Bredour, former treasurer of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, has worked tirelessly to provide a voice for the farm workers. She has advocated in front of the Homestead Housing Authority for improved maintenance and responsiveness to the tenants' needs. We felt there was a problem, a big time problem. Then we drove by every single house and I took pictures of all of the houses that needed repair. And I was just amazed when I found out that since 1960, um, when they were built, nothing's been painted. Melissa Tapenez, an environmental and land use attorney, worked with Peggy Bredour in speaking for those who prefer to remain invisible due to their illegal status. Regrettably, um, it's very difficult to get the tenants to speak up um, in a legal forum because of their documented status and their vulnerability as migrant workers, their fear of losing their jobs and being shipped back to wherever they're from because here at least they get paid in dollars and they have an opportunity to work. Due to their illegal status in this country, there is strong political opposition against migrant farm workers and any housing and other programs to assist them. In fact, with the economic slowdown, many feel that these farm jobs should be exclusively available to American citizens. The position of the Center for Immigration Studies that, um, that you would like to have the number down to zero? Absolutely. I mean, the, the, there's really no rationale in the nation, first of all, with 150 million person labor market, very mobile and flexible labor market, uh, young native-born minority men are actually more and more pulling out of the labor market. There's actually a crowding out effect taking place because of low-skilled immigration overall. This is just one piece of that puzzle. Frankly, we did not notice this crowding out effect in Homestead. The fields appeared empty until we took a closer look, and out of nowhere, a group of Mexican farm workers were finishing a long day of picking and loading green beans. It was difficult to envision American citizens willingly carrying out this arduous job. Migrant farm workers are this country's invisible resource. This silent labor force keeps our hunger away. But who is keeping their hunger away?